Everyone's special, Dash. Which is another way of saying no one is. Fine, have it your way, Dash. Let's pit you against your family in a battle to the death to see which special is the most special of all the specials. It's time for a death battle! Welcome to Film Theory, the only show that can monologue longer than a villain in a superhero movie. You sly dog! You got me monologuing! I can't believe it. Today I'm covering what's perhaps the most beloved movie in Pixar's lineup, The Incredibles. A film that probably earned that title because a lot of you watching saw it when you were kids. A fact that, in retrospect, is a bit alarming considering what the movie's really about. I mean, for a family-friendly film, you have a villain that actually kills people, a wife that suspects that her husband is cheating, and repeated deaths by engine turbine. I've always thought that it had a weird message, too, where Buddy, the young fanboy who's shunned by his hero, pulls himself up by his bootstraps to become a billionaire weapons designer, using his genius intellect to create devices that give him the power of a superhero himself, which honestly is a story arc that should be praised. I, I gotta say, as the one who felt ostracized throughout school, I totally relate to this guy's story. He should be a good role model. He didn't give up. He used his innate abilities to get better, to get to the position where he wanted to be. But instead, in this movie, he has an inferiority complex and becomes a sociopathic killer. You mean you killed off real heroes so that you could pretend to be one? Oh, I'm real, and I did it without your precious gifts, your oh-so-special powers. Hey, hey, Pixar, I totally feel what you're going for here, but seriously, intelligence should be a real superpower. But nope, not in The Incredibles, and then the rest of the film treats him like a joke, until he dies a gruesome death and the heroes are all solidified as the ones who are born with their innate abilities. Clearly, this movie believes that some people are just more super than others. And since you killed off the character I most relate to, movie, I'm going full super villain and giving you a dose of your own medicine. Which super is the most super in the par? family. Who is the most powerful Incredible? Is it the Speed Demon Dash, the Quiet Psychic Violet, the Flexible Elastigirl, or the Brute Force of Mr. Incredible? There's also the baby Jack-Jack, the big wild card in the family whose powers seem to vary from setting himself on fire to changing to different materials. You could say he's a regular Jack-Jack of all trades. But knowing how Hollywood storytelling works and based on the fact that the trailers are already playing all this up, it probably means he's gonna be revealed to be the most powerful character in Incredibles 2, so I'm knocking him out of the competition. In the meantime, though, place your bets, ladies and gentlemen, because four Incredibles enter, one Incredible leaves. <laughs> Man, I really am starting to sound like Syndrome. Everyone can be super, and when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. First things first, if you want to talk about raw strength, then you have to talk about Mr. Incredible. Even if Bob Parr has put on a few pounds since retiring from his superhero days, he is still a hunk of muscle, tossing around cars the same way most of us would toss around a frisbee. Well, I guess if he were really throwing the car like I throw a frisbee, it would mean he would throw the car, it would immediately karate chop down into the ground and then roll around on its edge in a direction completely opposite the thing I was trying to throw it at, just rubbing the shame in my face as it rolls. But where we really see him start to push his powers to their limits is when he halts a train traveling at full speed right in its tracks. To figure out how much force he needs to stop that train, we need to know two things. The train's deceleration, how quickly he was able to bring that train to a halt, and the train's mass. Calculating the train's mass is a bit difficult because for the brief moments that the train is actually seen on screen, we never see how many train cars there are. However, with a bit of historical research, we can actually come up with a pretty good guess on how many train cars there were, how much they weighed, and how fast the train would have to have been moving. In order to determine the mass of each railway car, we can compare it to a similar railway car in the real world. In the movie, we see Bob reading a copy of the Metroville Tribune, which, when you zoom in real close, shows that the second half of this movie is set in the year 1962. The train stopping scene happens in the movie's opening moments before a 15 years later flash forward, meaning that that scene with the train happens in 1947. Details also point to the city of Metroville being based on Chicago. 
Chicago. The font and name of the newspaper make it look like a tribute to the famous Chicago Tribune. And Chicago is a metropolitan city that had a booming economy during the time period of the movie. More importantly, Chicago is also famous for its L train, short for elevated train that served as a citywide rapid transit system since 1892. Based on the year the movie takes place and the appearance of the cars, they appear to be the Metroville equivalent of the Chicago L train's Steel 5000 series cars, which were in service from 1947 to 1985. We also know, based on historical research, that the 5000 series of car had an unloaded weight of 93,000 pounds, plus another 14,688 pounds from the weight of all the passengers inside. And yes, I calculated that using the average weight of a person in 1950, which I might note is over 20 pounds lighter than the average weight for a person in the year 2000. Okay, you have to account for everything when it comes to historical accuracy and also our ever-expanding waistline. Lastly, the length of the train. In the scene, we're able to count 11 visible railway cars, and based on everything we know about elevated trains in the 1940s, which is a surprisingly large amount after doing this episode, the train probably wouldn't be any longer than that. In fact, it was uncommon for trains to be longer than six cars during commuter hours way back then. All of that gives us a grand total of 1,184,568 pounds for the mass of the train. That is 592 tons. Mr. Incredible certainly has a lot of work to do, and work he does. He brings that train from 55 miles per hour to a screeching halt in just under 10 seconds. 9.9 .9 seconds if we want to be exact. To do that to a 592 ton train, he'd need to exert a force of 1,333,000 newtons. That's the equivalent of 299,670 pounds of force. Just for comparison, a study of 70 boxers found that elite level fighters punch with an average of 776 pounds of force, with the strongest one ever not being able to reach 1,300 pounds of force. Bob's punch, by comparison, would be 230 times stronger than that. They don't call him Mr. Incredible for nothing, and with that, 1,333,000 newtons of force is our number to beat. Next up is Helen Parr, aka Mom, aka Elastigirl. Measuring Elastigirl's strength is a bit trickier here since she's not really about raw strength, but rather raw stretch. We never really get to see her stretched to her limits, haha, <laughs> but we do get to see how flexible her abilities are. But um ching, alright, I'm done with the puns. She has a parachute mode, boat mode, hovercraft mode, limbo mode, shield offspring from oncoming homing missile explosion mode. Hold up, completely shielding the kids from an explosion? of a homing missile? Yikes! If her body is able to go full Groot and repel the force of an explosion like that, protecting what's inside, it must be pretty strong. And based on her passing out in the aftermath of the explosion, it's pushing her powers to their limits, so that is the scene we're gonna analyze. But just how strong is she? Let's look at the missiles. We don't actually see any other aircraft in the vicinity, so it looks like these are gonna be surface-to-air missiles, SAMs, as opposed to air-to-air -air missiles. But how powerful are they? Well, when it comes to surface-to-air missiles, the explosive yield will ultimately depend on the warhead it's carrying, but faster usually means more powerful. I mean, the fastest missiles in the world are ICBMs, which can reach speeds of over Mach 15. 15 times the speed of sound! And they're usually designed to carry nuclear warheads. It's a scary thought. Anyway, from the way that the missiles appear to only barely outspeed the plane, we can assume that they're probably moving at close to the same rate. Now, a typical commercial jet would be able to hit speeds of around 600 miles per hour, which is subsonic less than the speed of sound, not even Mach 1. And we never actually see Helen's plane cross any sound barriers even as she's trying to avoid these missiles. So that means that the missiles must be moving pretty slowly. Currently, the slowest and typically weakest surface-to-air missiles used by the US military still hit a speed of around Mach 2.5, which means, I guess, Syndrome's weapons budget was more focused on building killer robots and not so much on buying anti-aircraft missiles. Information on this subject is a bit hard to find, and digging around for it has undoubtedly put me back on top of several government watch lists. There goes my trusted traveler pass I worked a year to get. But out of all the missiles used by the US military, the slowest one is the RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile. 
Ram, a missile delivering a warhead with an explosive yield equivalent of 47.279 megajoules, or just around 24.9 pounds of TNT. But here's where things get even more complicated. In the scene, we see not one, not two, but three missiles. Also, Elastigirl isn't even the first thing the explosion hits, impacting the plane before even hitting her. Also, also, we have to consider the fact that Elastigirl isn't at the epicenter of the explosion when the missiles go off. This all matters because what we think of as an explosion is basically just a shock wave that gets weaker and weaker as you move away from the epicenter. And this drop-off happens exponentially. So this time, we're just gonna have to do some rough estimations. If we estimate that the plane's main body, or fuselage, is 10 centimeters thick aluminum, standard for a typical Boeing aircraft, and we use what we know about the impact strength of aluminum, and estimate Elastigirl's distance from the initial explosion at around 3 meters based on the size and shape of the cabin and where we see the missile impact the aircraft, Elastigirl's body is absorbing a whopping 3,510,000 pounds of force. That is more than 10 times as much force as we calculated for Mr. Incredible to stop that moving train. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a new front runner and a new definition of girl power and a new definition of wonder. Wo okay, I'll stop. Up next is Flash. I, I mean Dash, the speedster of the family. Who knows though, maybe Incredibles 2 will feature reverse Dash, complete with a yellow costume. They could even completely rip off the Flash and recreate that time that the Flash was shot with a fat ray, kidnapped and then put on display as the thousand pound blunder like some sort of freak show. Ha <laughs> ha! You get it? Cause he's obese now. Yikes! The 60s were a very different time. Anyway, Dash demonstrates his super speed a lot throughout the movie, but believe it or not, the greatest feat of speed that we actually see him pull off is when he rushes up to his teacher's desk to place a thumbtack on the seat, then rushes back to his seat. This little rat is guilty! He's guilty! You can see it on his smug little face. Guilty! I say guilty! Hey dude, calm down. Why are you freaking out? It's just a prank, bro. Don't be a prick about it. Get it? Prick? Cause it's a thumbtack? <clears throat> anyway, the teacher, determined to catch Dash in the act, has a surveillance camera record the incident. And for a single frame of the video, we see Dash moving. If we assume that the video is recording at 24 frames per second, as most video cameras did back in 1962, that would mean Dash was covering a distance of about 4 meters in just 1 24th of a second. That translates to a speed of 96 meters per second, or 214 miles per hour. But does that give Dash the ability to topple his mother's strength. Earlier, we saw Mr. Incredible stop a speeding L train, but could he stop Dash running towards him at top speed? Well, what's most impressive about Dash isn't his speed so much as it is his acceleration. The fastest sports cars on Earth take around two seconds to go from zero to 60 miles per hour. Dash is able to go from zero to 214 miles per hour, stop, and then reverse his direction to get back to his seat again in just a tiny fraction of a second, literally less than the blink of an eye. I ran the numbers and he's accelerating at a rate of 9,216 meters per second squared. To figure out whether Dash can actually topple his father, we use one of my favorite equations of all time on the show, FMA, or force equals mass times acceleration, to solve for the force that Dash is creating. We just found his acceleration. Now multiply that by the average mass for a 10-year-old boy, which is about 72 pounds or 32.5 kilograms, and we find out that Dash's speedy little legs are generating 299,500 newtons of thrust, the equivalent of 67,300 pounds of force, which is more thrust than the engine of a Boeing 747 commercial jetliner. With force and speed like that, perhaps his most amazing super ability is the fact that he's able to get away with that tack prank. He should be causing a massive wind that sends papers, at the very least, flying throughout the classroom. Anyway, at just under 300,000 newtons, he's still a million newtons away from the raw strength of his father. To match the force of his dad, Dash would need to put on a few pounds. A few hundred pounds, in fact. Starting with that 1.3 million newton threshold we calculated for dear old dad and dividing by Dash's acceleration, he'd need to weigh in at 141 kilograms or 310 pounds to tackle his father. And 
way more than that to punch through his mother's elasticity. 837 pounds, or a whopping 380 kilograms. Where is a good politically incorrect flash fat ray when you need it? And then there was one. 14-year-old Violet, the bashful shy girl who wants nothing more than to reject her superpowers and be normal herself. Now, she's a tricky one since her powers aren't physical like anyone else in her family. First, the girl who wants to hide from the world can, appropriately enough, turn invisible. But more to our purposes, she can create force fields capable of blocking pretty much anything. And you can't have a force field without the word Force, the exact measurement we've been using to compare the family. We find out about 90 minutes into the movie that Violet's force fields can easily deflect bullets. Using the performance of a standard issue M16 rifle as reference with a 960 meter per second muzzle velocity, 4.02 grams mass per bullet, and an estimated stopping distance of 0.01 meters, the protective bubble she's creating is acting with 83,288 pounds of force, 370,000 newtons. That alone puts her ahead of her brother when it comes to raw strength, but it's not even close to the full extent of her force field's power. You have more power than you realize. Don't think. And don't worry. If the time comes, you'll know what to do. It's in your blood. In the final battle against Syndrome's Omnidroid version 10, she pulls out her strongest force field to protect Dash from the giant robot. The Omnidroid 10 is a metal sphere with a hull thickness of about half a meter and a diameter of about 39.6 meters. And we know this by comparing it to the size of the buildings we see it next to, where it appears to be about 12 stories high. Accounting for the fact that the Omnidroid appears to be mostly hollow inside, the metal part alone would have a volume of 2,402 cubic meters. That amount of steel would have a mass of 1.85 times 10 to the 7th kilograms or 40,780,000 pounds. Newton's third law, you know the one that says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, tells us that if Violet is supporting an object that weighs 40 million pounds, then her force field has to exert an upward force of 40 million pounds. 181,398,476,000 newtons! That is nearly 180 times times the force that her father used to stop that train, and over 10 times what her mom withstood in the plane explosions. And that's not even calculating the fact that the robot is slamming its body into the force field, which means that we have unequivocally found our strongest incredible. It is dear old dad. Yeah. The force field would make Violet the strongest incredible by an enormous margin if it weren't for the fact that several seconds later when Violet passes out from the effort of holding up that object, we see her father step in to save the day by lifting up the exact same Omnidroid, and unlike Violet, he's able to sustain that weight without passing out from the effort. But that's impossible, I hear you saying. I said it too when I was researching this episode. Violet has to be the strongest. From our calculations, Mr. Incredible holding up that robot takes more than a hundred times times the amount of force that we saw him use to stop the train at the start of the movie. And it's not like he wasn't trying when it came to stopping that train. He knew that there were a lot of lives at stake and he barely managed to stop it before it fell off the rails. So how is it that we see him so much stronger at the end of the movie, especially when we know that this is after 15 years of him being out of service as a super? Well, maybe this heroic feat of strength is chalked up to the greatest superpower of them all, family. Aww. <sighs> Ugh, gag me. Cut it out with your family kumbaya nonsense, you hippies. But seriously, seeing his children's lives at stake, Bob leaps to their defense and provides the most monumental demonstration of strength that we see throughout the entire movie. This is actually known as hysterical strength, a display of extreme strength by humans beyond what's believed to be normal, usually occurring when people are in life and death situations. This is most commonly associated with stories of parents lifting vehicles to save their kids. In this case, it's Bob Parr lifting a giant death droid to save his kids. Scientific evidence to prove it is scarce, since, as you can imagine, it's a bit hard to test this sort of thing in a lab. Hey, we're gonna put your kid under a car. Go lift it! But it is theoretically possible, believed to be tied to the body increasing adrenaline production in times of crisis. So Violet is definitely number one, unless parental instincts come into play. And you know what? 
That seems like a fitting climax for a movie that's ultimately more about family bonds than it is about superpowers. Sometimes it takes a family to save the day. And even though Dash and Violet might not be as strong as their dad, in a way, they were indirectly responsible for his greatest feat of strength. And that's Disney Pixar's The Incredibles, your favorite childhood movie with the moral of you have to be born special in order to be special. Sorry, Syndrome. Your super intelligence and ceaseless work ethic don't merit you becoming a super. Super. Luckily, real life doesn't have to work that way. Work hard enough and you can gain yourself super abilities. Case in point, our sponsor for the day, Skillshare, an online learning community with more than 17,000 classes in film, business, and writing. Basically, it's all the skills that you need if you're thinking of becoming a super YouTuber, or really any other modern day career for that matter. Finding good, reliable, and most importantly, useful resources to teach yourself online is surprisingly difficult these days. I mean, you don't want to fall into the trap of Jake Paul's How to Be a YouTuber program, which, I kid you not, is a real thing that is really unhelpful. So Skillshare solves that problem by giving you access to online educators who really have the skills and want to help you succeed. True story, I had to teach myself everything when I first started on YouTube, and videos like the ones that I found on Skillshare, such as editing in Premiere Pro for beginners, were the only ways I was able to get better, because there are just some things that you don't know that you don't know. And honestly, these sorts of videos are how I continue to teach myself to this day, and short classes like Skillshare's creative direction for drone filming and DIY cinematography are helping me learn more skills, more modern skills, that allow me to be more creative in my videos. And I know I talk a lot about video, but it's not just video. Skillshare has everything from search engine optimization, to website building, to mobile app design, 3D printing, Microsoft Excel. Basically, it's all the things that schools should be teaching you for a job in the modern workplace, but are too far behind the times to cover. So Skillshare's there to fill in the gaps. And not only is Skillshare more useful than most school courses, it's also way more affordable, with an annual subscription costing less than $10 a month. And with this special offer, you can get the first three months of Skillshare for just 99 cents. It was originally supposed to be through the month of January, but because you guys are so special, and because this video happened so late in the month, they're extending it until February 15th. What better gift to give your loved one for Valentine's Day than the gift of knowledge? GT Live merch, technically, but that won't be on sale until next week, so... Skillshare! Sign Sign up at the link that you see on screen, or it's at the top line of the description, skl.sh slash film theorists. You know what, actually, no, that, that is a crappy URL, you're never gonna remember that, oh, .sh, yeah, I'm gonna remember to put that up in the URL bar. It's in the top line of the description, sign up, it's 99 cents to try it for three months, teach yourself a couple new skills like drone filmmaking, which is tough, you're just not gonna find that stuff anywhere else. So remember, friends, life isn't like The Incredibles, you can work to achieve what you want, and play Places like Skillshare are out there to help. Again, one last time, Incredipunch, punch that link in the description, since not even super memory will help you remember the huge block of link text you see on screen right now. But you know what you can remember? The fact that this was all just a theory. A film theory. And commence learning.